In this lesson, you'll get an overview of importing and linking CAD files and also link an AutoCAD drawing. In order to complete the lessons, you will first need to download the free dataset. This link is shared in the video description and also on this slide. You can link CAD documents into Revit and later reload or unload the CAD files. It is possible to link AutoCAD, Bentley MicroStation, DXF and Trimble SketchUp files. It's important to understand that the internal origin of Revit has a geometry limit centered about the internal origin of 20 miles. This means that when you bring in or insert an AutoCAD file, the geometry cannot be more than 20 miles or 32 kilometers from this internal origin. Before work commences on a Revit model, it is vital that a post-contract BIM execution plan and master information delivery plan are created and distributed to everyone involved. These documents will clearly identify how each discipline will build and coordinate their models. In our project, the grid intersection A1 will be the agreed internal origin point for everyone involved in the project. We'll continue by creating a new project, or you can continue in your previous project created in module 2.0. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and create a new structural project. So I'll click New, and from the template file, I'll select Structural Template, and then click OK. In the project browser, let's switch to Structural Plans, Site. The Site view will be where we link in our CAD file. Before we link in our CAD file, we need to understand where the internal origin is positioned. And in order to do this, we're going to use something called visibility graphic overrides. This is very much like layers in AutoCAD, but much more advanced. So there are a number of ways we can get to visibility graphic overrides. You can begin by perhaps clicking on the view ribbon. And on the view ribbon, we have visibility graphics. Or you can type in VV or VG on the keyboard. In the visibility graphic dialog box, you can see here that we have a model categories tab. And under the model categories tab, we want to locate site. We'll switch site on and then expand the subcategories. Here, you can see that we can locate and switch on the internal origin. Let's go ahead and click OK. And we can now confirm that the internal origin is now displayed. Next, we'll actually insert the CAD file. To do this, select the Insert ribbon, and then select Link CAD. Navigate to your course dataset, and go ahead and select Module 2.0 AutoCAD Grid Import. Before we go ahead and import this, I just want to talk a little bit about the AutoCAD file that we're linking in. So this is the file that we're going to use. And if I zoom up on the intersection of grid A1, you can see that this is the intended project setting out point. It's vitally important to get this correct. If you get this wrong in Revit, you cannot move the internal origin point, And the elements around that are fixed, very much like the WCS in AutoCAD. So it's really important to make sure that all parties understand the setting out point. And in this project here, we're going to use the intersection of grid A1 as that setting out point. If I type in ID in AutoCAD and I snap to this location here, you can see in fact here the coordinate is 0, 0, 0. The project will be correctly set up to ordinate survey coordinates in a later module. But in this example here, we're going to make sure that all of the files that we link into Revit have the origin 0, 0, 0. Another thing to understand is that if we select the layers, in the AutoCAD layers, if we don't want these layers to be brought into Revit, we can either freeze them or switch them off. So for example here, you can see I have a number of civil 3D layers that I might not want in my project. So I can just go ahead here and freeze them or switch them off, whatever I want to do. And then when I bring this into Revit, those layers will not feature and show. Okay, let's switch back to Revit. So here we are back in the link CAD formats dialog box. Um, incidentally, don't worry if you haven't got AutoCAD installed. This, um, you just need to understand how this is going to be brought in. 
So with this file selected, we need to draw our attention to the bottom half of the dialog box. So here, I'm going to make sure that we bring this into the current view only. That means that it won't feature and be visible in elevations or 3D views. The colors I want to preserve. So if I've used a blue line in AutoCAD, I want to see that same blue line in Revit. So we were just discussing layers here. And what I want to do here is make sure that I only bring in the visible layers in this CAD import. The import units, depending on how they're set in AutoCAD, I could either rely on Auto Detect or the safer option is to use custom factor and make sure that you have a scale of one. In this example, I don't want to create lines that are slightly off axis. And here I want to position this auto origin to internal origin. And what that means now is that will land on grid A1 directly over this internal origin here. If we go ahead and select open, we'll then see the CAD file has now been brought in. When a CAD file is linked origin to origin, it is automatically pinned. To confirm this, if you select this CAD import, you'll notice here that we have a push pin symbol. And that push pin symbol is telling us that this object is actually pinned. Therefore, it can't move unless we unpin the object. To show you how we go about pinning and unpinning, if you select this pin and we just unpin it temporarily, you'll notice up on the ribbon here, I have the option of pinning any element I like or unpinning. Another very useful function is the ability here to set a selection filter so we can't physically go ahead and select any pinned elements. To do this, if we go to the select button and we choose the selection options, you can see here that I'm able to select links and I'm also able to select pinned elements. I'm just going to uncycle that option. And you'll now notice here that although our cursor is moving over the CAD file, I will not be able to select that CAD file. If the architect or the surveyor sends through new versions of this CAD file, we would of course need to reload this with the latest rendition. To do this, on the insert ribbon, you'll note here we have manage links. Let's go ahead and select manage links. And in the manage links dialog box, you can see that we have a number of tabs depending on what we're actually managing. And in this case here, we're managing CAD formats. You can now see that we have our linked model here. Notice it's currently loaded. So if I have received a new version of this with exactly the same file name, I can simply click reload and then Revit will reload that CAD link. However, if the file is different and for example, it might be suffixed with V2 for version two or version three, then I would select reload from and I could then select the new version of that CAD file here. If I want to temporarily unload the CAD file, I can select this link here again, and here you'll note I can unload. Now, of course, if we unload this file, you'll notice it now disappears from the Revit database, but the link is still there. So if I want to now revive that link, I can go back to the inserts ribbon, manage links, select the CAD formats tab, pick the link, and here I can simply now reload that link. If we want to switch off individual layers within this CAD file, we can do just that. We can use visibility graphic overrides. So again, if we want to use the ribbon to control visibility graphic overrides, we can select view. And on the view ribbon, we can select visibility graphics, or you can use a keyboard shortcut VV or VG. Note here we have the various different tabs across the top of the visibility graphic overrides dialog. If I select imported categories, you'll now notice that we have our CAD file and we have all of the layers making up that CAD file. So for example here, if I wanted to switch off the columns and perhaps the dimensions, I could do that here. And now if I hit apply, you can now see those objects are switched off. Now, in fact, we do want these on, so we'll put them back on in here. But what I do want to do is make this CAD import half tone. So you'll notice up here, we can select half tone, and then these objects would appear lighter in the background of Revit. We'll go ahead and select OK. 
So our CAD model is now linked into our Revit project and we're now ready to create some grids and levels. In preparation for this, let's go ahead and save our model. On the quick access toolbar, select save. In the save as dialog box, you'll notice that Revit doesn't allow you to save back to older versions. We mentioned this at the start of the course, and this is incredibly important. You can only save this as Revit 2021. And the reason for this is that the schema of the database will be different on each version of Revit. We have to make sure that all consultants working on the project are working on the same version of Revit. So here we can give this a file name. Let's call this project Project A. We can also configure how many backup files are saved of this project. To do this, you can select Options. And you can see by default, I have three backups saved. We'll take a look at those backup files in a later module. We can then click OK and then click Save. So module 2.1 is now complete.